So okay, we started off by exploring these this initial uh, classification of voltage-gated calcium channels into L-type, N-type, and T-type. However, it gets more complicated because uh, pharmacological agents uh, then allow us to distinguish between two types of uh, calcium voltage-gated calcium channels in neurons. So basically, uh, what we uh, what was found is that. Um, uh, there was an, there were two types of uh, calcium channels in neurons. There was an, this N type, uh, and there was a new type called P type. And the reason it was called P type was that it was found in the Purkinje cells of the cerebellum. So the Purkinje cells are an extremely important cell in the cerebellum. They are absolutely massive if you see them histologically. Uh, they sit in the sagittal plane of the cerebellum, and uh, they have uh, they're very important in the motor system. Okay, so basically what happened is that um, what they, we were doing patch clamp experiments like this, and basically you could not tell the difference between these two types of channel just by uh, looking at their conductance with response to a stimulating electrode. So one of the ways we originally told the difference between L, N, and T type was that they actually, they, their, um, their traces on on this patch clamp experiment look different, i.e. their conductances of uh, calcium uh, is different from one another. Um, the, their, the time course of their stimulation and how the conduct, their conductance of calcium ions varies is different. These two couldn't be told, told, told apart uh, using that mechanism, uh, so instead how they were how it was shown that there were two different types was that um, you could block that you could block the effect of stimulating them, i.e. return it just to a straight line in the patch clamp experiment using different pharmacological agents. So N-type calcium channels are blocked by something called omega conotoxin um, uh, G6A. Okay, so uh, this is often uh, often abbreviated omega CTX, so conotoxin uh, G6A, basically. Okay, so if you apply, if you get a N-type calcium channel uh, in a piece of membrane like this, and you do the patch clamp experiment, you stimulate it like this, and you expect to see your your usual trace. Here's the here's the movement of current from extracellular to intracellular uh, for the uh, stimulating electrode, and then we expect to see a movement of uh, current uh, uh, of electrons from the extracellular to the intracellular to balance the movement of calcium that um, occurs because the voltage gated uh, calcium channel has been activated, which is this yellow line here. However, if you apply omega conotoxin G6A, uh, then it will stop this channel uh, from opening, and uh, you will get um, you will get um, you will, won't see this second peak here. Basically, okay. For P-type calcium channels, the um, agent is different. Basically, um, you. This, this is ineffective against these P-type channels. So if you go to a Purkinje cell, take out what was thought to be an N-type channel from Purkinje cells, and try and block it, to, uh, block it with omega conotoxin G6A, it doesn't work. Instead, Purkinje cells are blocked by something called omega agatoxin G6A uh, and omega agatoxin uh, G6B. So they're blocked by two pharmacological agents which are different from omega conotoxin G6A. Um, and omega conotoxin G6A, I believe, comes from uh, fish hunting snails, whereas omega agatoxin uh, G6A and omega agatoxin G6B are found in spiders, basically. So these are that's why they're called toxins rather than uh, having different names, because um, they are um, they're, they're not um, you know they're, they're naturally found and used in nature to cause problems for other for your prey and I just want to add that I made a mistake in the uh, previous video I said that Bay Bay K eight six four four was an antagonist for um, L type calcium channels it's actually an agonist i .e. it increases uh, the conductance of calcium uh, through these channels uh, so that's different basically that's an agonist but again it's a pharmacological agent that is specific to L type calcium channels and allows us to discern that um, this is a different type of channel uh, to the others because uh, this drug is ineffective against the others.
Okay, uh, so now what we're going to move on to is uh, the structure of cal voltage-gated calcium channels. And voltage-gated calcium channels have a very, very similar structure to voltage-gated um, sodium channels, except that they have a much uh, they have a much more auxiliary subunit, basically. So let's start off with the central subunit of um, of a voltage-gated calcium channel, which is called the alpha-1 subunit. And effectively, this is absolutely the same as uh, for sodium channels. It's got a very, very similar structure. So what you have is you have four cylinder-like um, protein structures here. Uh, called the four domains of the alpha-1 subunit. So at the moment, we're just looking at the alpha-1 subunit. But the alpha-1 subunit, just like in the case of the voltage-gated sodium channel, where the alpha subunit is a functional voltage-gated sodium channel on its own, i.e. it didn't need the beta subunit, this alpha-1 subunit is a functional voltage-gated calcium channel, whether it has the auxiliary subunits or not. So here is uh, the... Um, Voltage gated, the, the completion of the alpha 1 subunit. So you have four of these cylinder structures which both which completely span uh, the membrane basically. And this one is called domain 1, this one is called domain 2, this one is called domain 3, and this one is called domain 4. And basically it's very, very similar to the voltage gated sodium channel. So you have an amino terminus coming off of uh, domain 1. So basically this entire channel is made up of a single polypeptide and here is the amino terminus of that polypeptide. So it goes through, forms um, domain 1, then it, the polypeptide goes into domain 2, continues on, forms domain 2, then it goes into domain 3, forms domain 3, goes into domain 4, forms domain 4, and then it finally ends over here with the carboxyl terminus. And both of these are on the intracellular domain of the um, membrane. Uh, they're on the intracellular side of the membrane rather than the extracellular uh, side of the membrane. Okay, uh, so uh, now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to... Um, oh, actually, that's just the alpha-1 uh, subunit of um, the of the voltage-gating calcium channel. Just like in the case of uh, the uh, voltage-gated sodium channel, there are auxiliary subunits which alter the function of these other sub of this main subunit, but are not essential. Um, this is the pore down here uh, where calcium will come. So calcium goes into there and then will come out the other end, basically. Uh, so if you just make this it will work. It will be a voltage-gated calcium channel, but the auxiliary subunits are extremely important for the regulation of the function of this channel. Okay, so one of the first subunits you have is the gamma subunit sitting over here. So this is a gamma subunit which sits uh, on this side of the uh, voltage-gated calcium channel, i.e. near um, domains 1 and 2. And then you also have down here, on the intracellular aspect, you have a beta subunit, and that's bound between uh, the first and the second domain. So basically, there is a little... Um, when the polypeptide forms domain 1, it then has a little loop before it goes in to form domain 2, and basically the beta subunit is bound to that little loop. And we'll study that in more detail. There is then... Um, there is then uh, another subunit over here, uh, which is called um, the alpha-2 delta subunit. And basically, it's made up of two bits that almost look like this, and they have uh, disulfide bonds connecting them up together like that. So it's sulfur, sulfur. Disulfide bonds connecting them up like that. Uh, so this is the alpha-2 bit, and this is the delta bit, but they are connected together, and they form the alpha-2 delta subunit of the voltage-gated calcium channel. So you would write that alpha-2 uh, delta. Okay, and that's another important subunit. And alpha-2 and delta, both of these uh, bits that comprise the alpha-2 delta subunit, they actually come from the same gene. They're encoded, on by, uh, they're encoded by the same gene. Uh, and when they're expressed, they make one polypeptide. But later, the polypeptide is cleaved into two bits, the alpha-2 bit and the delta bit. And then they rejoin together with uh, two disulfide bonds, basically, to form the alpha-2 delta subunit. And that, overall, is uh, the uh, voltage-gated calcium channel, basically. These are all the auxiliary uh, subunits, and this is the essential subunit, this alpha-1 subunit. Okay, so now what we're going to do, just, in the case of, just as in the case of voltage-gated sodium channels, we're going to discuss the um, structure of the alpha-1 subunit in more detail uh, and uh, see how uh, the structure of its membrane-spanning domains, basically. So, okay, so we need another piece of paper. 
So this is almost identical, in fact I think it is identical to the voltage gated uh, sodium channel case. So if we have the plasma membrane here, then the structure of that alpha 1 subunit, so we're looking specifically at the alpha 1 subunit, is that you start off down here with the amino terminus. So here's the amino terminus of our polypeptide. And basically, if the polypeptide comes up, it comes out of the cell, this is the extracellular part, then it goes around. It turns around again, again, goes and forms the fifth membrane-spanning domain, then forms a loop which doesn't quite get in, so a hairpin loop uh, which doesn't quite go through the membrane, uh, but goes into the membrane, and then finally it forms the membrane-spanning domain six. So uh, this forms a single domain, so let's call this domain one, this is domain one. And then between the two diff uh, the neighboring domains, in fact I should have drawn this just continuous like that. Okay, between the two uh, neighboring domains there is a little intracellular loop and then it goes into domain two basically. And it continues on and it's the same pattern basically. You have the same pattern of uh, membrane spanning domains and a hairpin loop between the fifth and the sixth membrane spanning domain. Then you have a loop again and you form the third domain over here, like so. And then finally um, you go on and form the sixth, uh, the fourth domain rather. So the first, second, third, fourth, fifth membrane spanning domains, the hairpin loop, and the sixth membrane spanning domain. And then finally you'll end with the carboxyl terminus. Okay, so this forms domain one of the, uh, so this forms the first cylinder of the alpha one subunit. This forms domain two, the second cylinder of the alpha um, one subunit of the voltage gated calcium channel. This forms domain three, and this finally forms domain four, and they all have the same pattern of membrane spanning domains. And you would refer to the first membrane spanning domain as S1, the second membrane spanning domain as S2. The third membrane spanning domain is S3, the fourth membrane spanning domain is S4, the fifth membrane spanning domain is S5, you'd refer to that as the hairpin loop, and the sixth membrane spanning domain as S6. Now, just as with the voltage-gated sodium channel, the, volt the fourth membrane spanning domain of each of these um, domains of the alpha-1 subunit is positively charged, and it control is very important in the voltage gating of uh, these voltage gated calcium channels. And just again, just as in the case of the voltage gated sodium channel, the fifth membrane spanning domain is the is the uh, membrane spanning domain which aligns the pore of um, the um, voltage of the alpha one subunit. So basically, if I redraw out uh, the cylinder sort of structure, so like this, this basically all folds up into this. These sort of fold up into an, a nice cylinder like that and form this. And it's all one polypeptide is an important point to stress. Okay, so basically this fifth membrane spanning domain, in each one of these cases, this is domain one, this is domain two, this is domain three, this is domain four, which is really silly that I've just done that because I wanted to denote the fifth membrane spanning domain in pink. So basically you have the fifth membrane spanning domain facing into the middle of the pore and that's the, that's, those are the bits which the calcium ion will brush against as it goes through basically, or interact with as it goes through. Um, so uh, um, that's basically the structure of the um, alpha one subunit of the voltage gated calcium channel. Okay, the final thing to say is that the modern classification of calcium channels has evolved still yet. So now we'll go over the final and modern, um, uh, modern classification of voltage-gated calcium channels. So at the moment, this is the way we split them up. We split them initially up into high voltage activated and low voltage activated. So high voltage activated calcium channels are ones which require a big depolarization of uh, the uh, membrane uh, in order to uh, cause them to open. Whereas low voltage activated are those which don't require a very high uh, depolarization and will be activated by much smaller depolarization. So we have high voltage activated and low voltage activated. Um, and then uh, what you then split them up into is uh, you split them up into um, the high voltage activated splits into two types, the vo calcium voltage gated activated ones and the calcium voltage gated activated twos. And then uh, there's only one type at the moment of low voltage activated, which is the calcium voltage gated threes. 
And basically then, there are four types of calcium voltage-gated ones, labelled calcium voltage-gated 1.1 to 1.4 so it goes on you have 1.2 1.3 and then finally calcium voltage gated at 1.4 with calcium voltage gated twos and threes there are only three types of those so there's calcium uh, voltage gated 2.1 uh, calcium voltage and I'll stop drawing the boxes because that's getting pretty tiresome at uh, 2.2 and calcium voltage gated 2.3 basically and then similarly with 3 there are calcium voltage gated 3.1 to 3.3 basically so there are 3.1 3.2 and 3.3 right all of these ones are what were previously known as L type calcium channels and all of these ones were what were previously known as T type calcium channels these are what are known are what we previously called as P type calcium channels, which are now known as PQ type. Calcium voltage gated 2.2s are what were previously known as N type, and then calcium voltage gated 2.3s are a third type, which we've, another a new another new type which we've never heard of, which are R type. Okay, so that's the modern classification. There are four plus six of these, so there are ten overall voltage gated um, calcium channels, and. In the, the next coming lectures, what we're going to uh, video is what we're going to do is we're going to study uh, these voltage gated uh, calcium channels too. So we're going to focus in on the um, the second class here uh, because they're very very imp important for the uh, neurotransmission. These are the ones that basically that are in uh, axon terminals in the brain and therefore control the amount of neurotransmitter that is being released when an action potential arises at the ax uh, arrives at the axon uh, terminal.